This video is the product of the Functional Cranial Release Research Institute. For difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, visit functionalcranialrelease.com. Deep breath in. There's a certain sensation of, I guess, pain there. Is it pain or pressure? Um, probably pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what. The, yeah, it's pressure. You want to sit up for me? <coughs> I noticed when I came in today that if I would try to make a snoring sound, it would be pretty loud and it would hurt my throat. And when I'm trying now, let me see now. I'm trying really hard and it was it's much really worse It's really hard before. to do, yeah. yeah. You heard it earlier, it was, mm -hmm. it, was, it was like that Yeah. when I'm breathing through my mouth. But I could do it like that when I was breathing through my nose, but now I can't even uh -huh. Trying hard to do it. So the airway is more open. Yeah. Well, I notice as a rule, too, that the interesting thing is, I noticed this last week, that for the first time in my life, it's actually easier to breathe through my nose and my mouth. Even when I try to breathe through my mouth, I can actually, it feels like I'm getting more air in through my nose than mm -hmm. through my mouth. Mm. Whereas before, I think I breathe through my mouth a lot, especially. When I'm sleeping, yeah. well, unless I use my CPAP. Yeah. So, how long have you been using a CPAP? Um, probably like three or four years, and then there was probably a year and a half where I was using a dental device. Okay. But I can definitely breathe better. Yeah. And that's a big part of it, isn't it? Being able to breathe through your nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the problem with with sleep apnea is. You breathe through your mouth and then your throat closes on your airways. But if you can breathe fully through your nose and keep your tongue placement normal, because that holds out the whole, you know, architecture of the of the skull. Like on the skull here. You know what happens is your tongue. I can hold that. Okay. So you're, you're basically, your tongue fits in, fits in here. This um, purple bone's the maxilla, right here. So this purple bone's the maxilla that makes up kind of your cheekbone. And what happens to a lot of people is that that, that bone falls in. So it, it collapses. And so if you turn the skull totally upside down, you look at the bottom, this is the palate. That's what they call the palate. And that's where your upper teeth fit into. You see? And so what happens is that palate comes up into the sinus cavity, kind of like a tent, kind of like a tent going up. So if you bring this like this, so this, this sinks in and then it, it moves up into the sinuses so it closes up the airways. And so having your, when you're breathing through your nose, your mouth is closed and so your tongue is able to rest up into the oral, you know, cavity. And what that does is that supports the teeth and it holds this bone out. I mean, you can look in any orthodontist literature, you go to any orthodontist, they talk about how, the, how important the tongue is in development. So anybody with sleep apnea, it's a, it's a common kind of cascade of events that happens is, you know, you may have allergies or there may be some sort of childhood thing where you just never really became you know, a nasal breather. And so that tongue never developed to hold the architecture of the skull out. So what I've got you doing is tongue exercises, and then we're manipulating these areas of the skull to start to turn on the genetic material between all these bones, because be between all these bones is actually stem cells that can be turned on hmm. that can actually reshape the skull. And that's why it's feeling more open, because these stem cells are turned on and you're actually starting to get more room in through that airway. Cool. 
that make sense? Yeah. So this is all the nasal stuff, like the when I blow my nose and all that. This is where the congestion can happen. This kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Interested how that came into play. But when this is all when this is all closed up, you know, like it was before, you don't have good drainage, you know, and you you can either be a swamp or a river in your sinuses. Mm. So when it's a swamp, it's stagnant, and you look at a swamp, there's a lot of bacteria, and it's just, you know, it's kind of nasty, right? Yep. Where a river, it's nice and fresh. And so what we're doing is we're opening this up so that there's more of a drainage, so it's more like a river. Sounds good. And that's what it feels like, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Hi, this is Dr. John. Thanks for joining me. If you or a loved one suffers from difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, send them to functionalcranialrelease.com. You can contact me by phone or email me at askdrjl at gmail.com. And remember, if healing is possible, consider it to be within your reach. Bye for now. Functionalcranialrelease.com